is up, everyone? Kevin Hale, Heather Tungate on this Sunday night, giving it to you live via Blog Talk Radio. It's shooting from the lips round of sports shots this Sunday night, April April 23rd, 2017. What's up, lady? Nothing much. How you doing, Kevin? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Save the uh, Marilyn Monroe song for me for later in the show, you know, but I, I, I do expect you to. Okay. <laughs> it, uh, birthday weekend for me. I hit the big five zero. been celebrating most of the weekend. And here I am kind of chilling. And not only are we chilling together, Heather, uh, but we're doing a, to me is, you know, since we started our Sunday night sports show, you know, you and I have this vision on where we wanted to go with the show. And, you know, we'd like to talk, Mix in UK sports. We we didn't want to hijack Sunday night with a bunch of UK sports stuff. But when the opportunity became available for me to you know reach out to a former UK player, legend, legendary UK player, I had to go. We had to make this segment work. And uh, so I'm proud to say our first guest is we'll bring him on soon is uh, Tony Delk from the 96 championship team. We'll get his insight on the season, uh, the, 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 um, the, the cupboard, if you will, has basically been, it's gone. Well, we, I think we now mm-hmm. will bring up, we've lost another, potentially lo- lost another player off this team. Um, I want to ask him about Cal's, the 30 for 30 show that was on ESPN, which was, uh, got a lot of feedback. And, right. um, you know, just shoot the stuff with him. And then our second segment where we do our little round of shots where you and I with guests tonight, Daryl Faust, will talk what's trending lately in the sports world it's fun with that so uh, without further ado it is my pleasure to bring on uh, as i said a uk legend tony delk mr delk what is up my man nothing much happy uh belated birthday you are celebrating a milestone <laughs> and it's a, it's, it's a wonderful and a, and a great honor to be on with you. <laughs> yeah this yeah that's what people will you know one day ask me what did you do on your t- actually today is my birthday so they'll t- say what did you do on your oh, birthday so it's not night? Yeah. Well, birthday yeah no it's not belated birthday. so but no yeah so uh i say i got to spend it with uh with Tony Delk, so that's that. Uh, that's, that's a good one. I, I, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Not bad. Not Tony. Bad, you know, hey, yeah. If I, was, if I was there, we'd probably go out and get a drink. So hey, you know what? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna hold you to <laughs> that. If you're ever in Louisville or I'm in Lexington, we cross paths. We'll we'll do that. But um, it, it, thank okay, you so much no for problem. hanging out with us. So much for hanging out yeah. with us. Um, you know, we talk. We'll talk UK sports and stuff. But you right now are uh, part of the ESPN SEC network. You're an analyst there. Uh, tell us about that. How did that all come about for you? It's been a um, – I kind of lost my voice. I was actually in Lexington uh, over Easter weekend. I had hosted my first ever AAU event at Wendy Cream the Well at over 15. So my voice will sound a little funny right now. But uh, when I left New Mexico State and came back to Atlanta, I was in between uh, doing some volunteer work for uh, the Atlanta Hawks and scouting for them. And the ESPN uh, was just launching the network. So it just happened to know someone um, uh, in uh, with the ESPN office and interviewed and didn't really know exactly what I was getting myself into. Didn't know exactly what I was doing, but I knew it was going to be uh, something exciting because it still dealt with basketball and to get that opportunity to talk about the SC was something that I was definitely was intriguing me but it was exciting just to be a part of something that, that was just starting and uh, you know the guys they brought on uh, the whole uh, just the whole ESPN family have, uh, have embraced me so uh, I have enjoyed just being a part of the network three years three years it's already been three years wow um, yeah now to me you SEC, obviously your your ties with Kentucky. It's a no brainer uh, uh, that you would fit right in with the SEC. But you know, as we with SEC basketball, it's there's been a steady uprising lately. But what has been, in your opinion, why the SEC has been so down as of late? Well, I think you know this year and even going back to last year, the hiring of a coach, you know, when you bring in a Rick Barnes, um, you know, uh, and Mike White, uh, you know, Avery Avery Johnson, those coaches up in the conference because of their knowledge of the game and then being able to recruit the talent that is needed to make their brand of basketball step. So it starts with the coach, and when you get coaches, then you can go out, recruit the players, and then you have a network that can also sell to your recruits that, hey, you know what, your family's going to get a chance to watch you play if they can't. Um, they can't come to the game, and I just think the, uh, 
the recruits are getting better now. So even when it has been down and so much tension is geared towards the football, I think basketball kind of, you know, made their way this year and, you know, getting three teams to the lead eight and then having South Carolina get to the uh, to the final four. I mean, it's big value right. of what a guy like Frank Martin has done with the South Carolina program and, you know, and this fan of being there is bringing better talent. And the talent, you know, that they allow coach to really um, embrace the program, but also it helps them understand how success is. Take time. It's not a one-year um, a one-year plan. You have to have a four or five-year plan when you take one of the new jobs. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Huh? Yeah, and Tony, I was gonna yeah, I was gonna ask you, you know, speaking of Frank Martin, I think their run into the final four is only gonna help the conference, especially on a basketball level. Uh, do you think besides him, what what are some of the other hires in the SEC that have really helped or you will think will help the conference down the road? Well, you have to look at what Mike White has done with that team, you know, and, and he stepped yeah. in. He stepped into some big shoes. He had to fill some big shoes when Billy Donovan left. And um, Mike White, you know, just a, a he's a intelligent guy. He knows the game, and he allows his players to play. And um, you know, then just you look at Avery Johnson's pedigree, being the NBA Coach of the Year, taking his Dallas Mavericks team to the finals. Uh, he knows the game just, uh, just as well as anyone else does in college basketball. And that's about landing those those crews like Holland Sexton and just having really good players to come to your program. And it, it, it takes time. I think we'll look at what Coach Hal has done in his eight years, at, seven, eight years at Kentucky, is that he's brought in the best college talent, top in recruits. And when you can do that year in, year in, um, year after year, it lets you know that Hal is a really good coach because you only have a guy for about eight, ten months. And you've taken these AAU um, top players, high school all American and you get those guys for a number of months. And you're trying to turn these guys into men and prepare them for that mm-hmm. next level. So of all the programs, they're going to have longer. See a guy develop a team to get to about 21, 22. And then that's when his game, his game starts to really um, involve, uh, evolve. And that's what I like about, you know, the hire that we made this conference. And it's only going to get better. Mm-hmm. you got to look at what uh, Rick Barnes is able to do with the energy program and still have it really land those opportunities that he once had at Tech. So it's, it's a conference that's getting better. And I think this year we'll get more uh, get more respect from our conferences. Well, putting putting three teams in the Elite Eight uh, got the na- uh, the national media or you know fans' attention, uh, but then when we let's go shift to UK real quick, Tony, um, they got their they got to the Elite Eight, losing to the eventual champion North Carolina, and then right. <laughs> once the season ended, this whole process once again has is underway where we, in this case we, we're losing a lot of players i mean today it was announced that hamadou diallo has declared for the draft has not signed but in looking quickly looking out at some publications they have him as a potential first round draft so if he's if he's a potential first round guy i gotta say logic says he's gone what you know and of course cal can will always reload you know, that's his right. MO. That's his thing. But now, has it got to the point, because, you know, we, t- we we talk a lot of basketball, UK basketball, and we hear it through social media and stuff where the, some of the diehard fans, that those natives are a little restless that with all this talent, that there's only been the one championship. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've been a part of the the that you you are right. a part of BBN. BBN. Um, you know, how far, how much longer does the love fest continue uh and then you know because next year we're gonna have what nine new eight or nine new players right potentially well the one thing i could say it's tough i mean you i mean you have to it's about matchups having a little luck players staying healthy so even if you do have a full roster and, and we could look you know just across the country with uh programs that have guys three and four years it doesn't guarantee you're going to win a championship i mean you have to get no. good break uh you know one one bad shoot night i don't care how great a team you have you're going home it's not like you're trying to win an nba series so um you know and, and when i look back at this year, this this year's body of work, uh, I thought it was one of Cal's best job. You know, just how the guys bought into what he was saying. By the end of the year, they really came along, and I thought just so much improvement. Fox, how he was able to take over the game and uh, facilitate, you know, and um, and then of course, you know, you look at what Monk did. Some of the some of the games he had, and his explosiveness and um, his ability to, to create shots off the bounce. And bam, he improved uh, drastically from time I I seen him play in November. The season ended, but you know, I say if you reload uh, the fans, you know, that embrace my myself and God stayed four years and that's what made 
uh, the love of fans. You know, when they look at look back at the players, they can they, they saw the growth. Can't really see the growth. You got to see the growth in, in about a year. And the mm-hmm. Big Blue Nation is not really satisfied with that probably. They want to see guys stay three years. But these opportunities and so much money that's out there for these young players. See yourself being a first round draft pick. Your goal and your dream is to get to the NBA. And for Hamadou, if, if he can be drafted in the first round, you know, more power to him and family. Uh, you know, and, and Cal will be able to play a player that we never saw play with. We don't know what Hamadou, but you got to strike while the iron hot. That's Absolutely. true. Let me add. Let me add real quick, Heather, because I want to stay with Hamadou. Is that Kentucky basketball? Cal. They get a lot of grief from you know his critics. You know, and I I can imagine Bobby Knight right now. What he's thinking is that you got a guy that's not has only been on campus for what three months or so and is yeah. jetting away. <laughs> so you know, from that perspective, you know this this uh, you know Hamadou declaring. Uh, you know, we'll just you know keep those critics salivating. Like, see, you know, look at this. This is not good for basketball. Right. Blah, blah blah blah. But if the dream is there and the NBA allows it, what can you do? Well, I mean, like myself, you know, that went four years, the opportunity had presented itself early in my career, let's say my sophomore year, and, you know, I would have been one of those guys definitely at the ward. And, and you can't say you can't say too long because the critics, as much as they love you, the critics will pick your game part. So say three or four years and you're a ready-made player for the NBA because you bring in maturity, is that it's not always about the choice, it's about the interest. So every GM is looking for that calm dude at 18, 19. They're looking for the next Kobe Bryant, the next Kevin Garnett, the next LeBron James, and if it comes early, I mean, those guys that have an opportunity, you can't be upset with them. There's so much money in the way the salary cap is escalating. I mean, you want to get to your money early so you can maybe have two or three big contracts you that kind of player. And that's mm-hmm. all the guys are in right now. So unless the NBA steps in and says, hey, you know what, we want guys, not at 19, we want them to stay two years of college basketball, I think it helps brand. NBA as well as college calls. Now, the NBA fans, they will have a connection with these guys. At least they stay two years, opposed to just one year where you only seen them for a few months. So it, it has to come from um, the NBA if it's ever going to change right now uh, with guys being able to go on the internet and see where you're going to be drafted at. If you're a first round draft pick, top 10, top 15, and you haven't played a game, I would rub go now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know what, Tony? There is a faction of Big Blue Nation, especially, and it, you may have heard this on social media, right? That that <laughs> say Calipari, <laughs> um, while he may be a good, you know, recruiter, he's not a good coach. Mm-hmm. But I would argue with a lot of people that I think, especially this year or this season, that yeah. this is one of his better coaching jobs because Absolutely. he took a team Absolutely. at the start of the season who did not play well defensively at all, and then look what they nope. were doing in the tournament, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, so, so how do you, like, if you're Calipari, I mean, obviously he can sell the guys, you know, that want to come in because again, his, his number one job is to recruit the best players coming out of high school. Right. right. And how do you, how do you sell? Not only can I, you know, prepare you for the next level, but how do you tell the fans or his critics, so to speak, that, look, I clearly know what I'm doing. Not only am I preparing these kids to make a better life for themselves, but I'm making the game better, so to speak. How, do you, how, mm-hmm. how does he get that message across? Well, well the, the good thing about me and being a, a, a fan of Big Blue Nation, but also I was on Coach Hal's staff first game to Kentucky with John That's Wall right. and Marcus right. and Eric Gladstone. I got a chance to be there with Brandon Knight, Terrence Jones, uh, that crew that came yeah. in. Yeah. And I left too early because, you know, Ant Davis and Mike Kid Gilbert came in the following year. But, the follow- yeah. um, you know, <laughs> Coach Hal does a tremendous job of getting his players prepared, and it's a process. And by the time February, March, Rolled around, you're seeing Kentucky at their best. And when you take young 18 year old kids, first thing you got to get them to do, to do is to buy in to playing defense. And it took them some time because all these guys are so good and so skilled offensively that, you know, you have to kind of break them down to build them back up. And that's what Coach Howell does a tremendous job of. And he's been really good over his years of just getting young guys buy in playing defense. Because even as good an offensive player as you are, when you get to the next level, you got to be able to guard position. So he's also mm-hmm. getting those guys ready to guard a, you know, let's say a, a really good Westbrook. You know, you have a, Isaiah Thomas, you have Kevin Grant, and even with Willie Collie Pond, you know, being a super athletic player, is that his skill set was wasn't where it needed to be offensively, but defensively he was ahead of the curve, and his offense eventually was going to catch up. So when Coach Howe brings those young players in, it takes them time. And like I said, you have to, you know, have to have help. 
players got to you get some luck. And then your guys, chemistry wise, got to enjoy playing one another. And this year, like you said, Heather, was probably to me his best coaching job with so many young guys. And by the time they got to uh, UCLA, who was a team that probably most they could win, you know, they, they manhandled them. And the North Carolina game, if there were so many bad calls in the first half that, you know, oh, they, yeah. the top come down, you know, it, it did come down to the last play. To be honest with you, I, I was telling someone, I said, listen, Luke May, who made that shot, will not do anything else the rest of the year. And true to, true to what I said, he didn't do anything else. So you take a player like Theo Pinson, make a, made a really good drive, passed Luke May, one shot. But that's what I'm saying. As well as they played the second half and got back into the game, one shot, you uh, they make it, your season in. That's how college basketball is. That's what makes mm-hmm. Mark Madness such a wonderful time of year to watch and uh, to be a fan of. Yeah, that's where, you know, yeah, right. It, the, the season, it comes down to that one shot. People... I'm still hearing fans still moaning and groaning about the the officiating in the first half, and hopefully that uh, <laughs> that uh, that official has uh, is is not uh, under um, didn't have to go into uh, what is that witness prote- or whatever that is. But anyways, um, I want to know real quick though because we, we brought up a good point, you know. And Tony, you're probably you were probably guilty of this too back in the day. You, uh, you know, Mr. Basketballs, AAU stars, you offensive-minded divas. Once you get to college and figure out, or you know, then you you face the reality of the word defense. Tony, yeah, yeah. you hated yeah. defense. You hated that, it. <laughs> if you go, if you look at if you look at my career, I mean, that's where as many points and threes I'm three pointers I made. That when I came in, you write about McDonald's all America. I let State this mm-hmm. morning two years in a row. So for me, I, my my best defense was my, was my offense. The coach mm-hmm. you know, was like, you know, I remember him telling me, "Is you gonna make you gonna be a really good assist coach? You're gonna have a good board. You're gonna watch a lot of basketball. You're gonna learn how to play the game of basketball because defensively, uh, you gotta you have to be able to guard position, be able to help." teammate and those are things you really are not you don't really I'm not not to care about but it's not that made it's not a concern much scoring because everybody comes watch score dunk the ball right. threes that's what's exciting and for this younger generation they love to shoot three and they love you know see numbers so for me I really had to learn how to buckle down how to slide my feet and how to be in the right position take the right angle to play defense and that's what Coach Howe does a really good job of is uh, making sure his guys prepared on both sides of the ball not just saying okay hey we send a really good offense player they can't only they can only do one thing so you want to create versatility and that's what he does with his players and just seeing you know even the guys going to be coming in for this new class that you know they have a lot of work ahead of them but what he does and i will say this he doesn't hold grudges and he's a fair coach mm-hmm. <laughs> so heather something tells me tony could probably tell us exactly how many threes he had in his career at uk come on tony what's the number <laughs> i know it's uh, about 280 I don't know exactly. about yeah see that's how you, you work around yeah yeah, yeah the, about Tony, did you get to see cows? Did you get to see cows thirty for thirty? You know what? It, it was uh, it was actually the night I was traveling to Kentucky, so I didn't get a chance to see it. But I heard there was uh, a lot of great views about you know just mm-hmm. the, the whole uh, you know his Memphis years, his UMass years. Uh, you know, uh, some probably a few minutes. I know Coach Howell wanted more about what he what he's been doing with the Kentucky program, but I think mm-hmm. they want to go back to where he started and, and right. see how he was able to be successful at, at a place like UMass, a, a mid major, and how how can you take a team like that to, to the promise to, right. to the final four, to promise. And uh, so it, it lets you know that he can take talent and win with talent, and he can take mid-major talent and also win with talent. So it lets you know that he can win uh, mid-major, high level. Uh, he's, he's a successful coach because the one thing he does is that he is a player's coach. And we have a player's coach, and he's always been that. The players enjoy playing for him. They enjoy coming back. And when you can create that, that, that kind of buzz, that good after he can take up the phone, he can call a call at Towns or Anthony Davis and Mark Huff and those guys, John Wall, and those guys come back or they call him back, right. is that he has a great neck with those guys. And, and a lot of times the player coach is like this we, uh, this we depart. You know, it's like mm-hmm. I'm glad I'm gone. But when you can right. only stay with a coach only a year, you don't have to deal with him for the sophomore, your junior, senior season. By the time you, by the time you leave, you're happy to. You know, you're, you're tired of hearing that voice. It's like being a father, and you keep on your kids over and over. And what they do, they just tune you out. But they mm-hmm. will respect another voice. So that's where Coach Howard mm-hmm. guys. If they're just right. long enough to stand, respect what he's doing, and he gets the message across. Well, I'm guessing there's probably one thing you probably eventually tuned out Cal on is how many times did he remind you about UMass beating Kentucky at the you know beginning of that 95-96 season? (laughs) (laughs) A few, uh, (laughs) yeah. It's funny, it's funny you talk about that because even the night I'll get my jersey retired, uh, retired here, he threw a little mm. jab at, you know, no. having all those throws and, you 
know, he only had Mark Candy. But I was also I remind people that in 95, the year they lost, they lost in the lead eight. But they returned all their players just like we did. So when mm-hmm. we lost them early in the year, uh, they were like number five. We were number one. Um, they have really good teams. I mean, and that team remained number one all year. We were number two all year. So it wasn't like we lost to a bad team that, you know, you didn't you didn't hear from. I mean, two teams that we lost to in 95, 96, both teams were in the final four. And that, that very seldom happened when you could take two losses or even one loss. Right. So they, and those teams are the two teams that are in the final four. In so the final know, four, right. Good, yeah. UMass, yeah, well. UMass good. Yeah. And Mississippi State was a really good talented team that had that had two roles in their team. But uh, Coach Hatton, you know, like when I go back and talk about it, because I was just with him uh, right before uh, I had my AAU of it, you know, we always talk about just talent level and where kids are at right now. And, and some of these kids believe they're better than what they are. But when you, when you get a chance to go to NBA workouts for some of these guys who are putting their name out there, and the great thing is don't hire any. You know, you go and actually a GM and scout tell you where you're going to be projected at. So to give those coaches, they, they can kind of breathe fresh air now. You know, mm-hmm. they don't have to worry about those guys all going and, and now they can't come back. So some of these coaches know these guys aren't ready. But, hey, you know what? To get a chance to put your name out there, more power to them. Good point. Good point. So, Tony, I wanted to ask you really quickly because there's been much kind of a noise made about this. So, a lot of the old school NBA players like Charles Barkley, Shaq, so on and so forth have talked about uh, this generation of NBA players being a little soft. Right. What's your opinion on that? You know what? I, I like the landscape of of, uh, of the NBA, college basketball. I mean, it's a it's a um, it's not as physical as it once was, but I like the players. I like freedom of movement. When you have great moves, that you know you shouldn't be able to put your hands on someone. You got to should be able. You have to be able to block feet, but block your feet. But if you can shoot, you're skilled. And I like the big man that you know, you know, seven footers that can that can shoot threes, that can dribble the ball. You know, so it's not just back when I played. You know, you had to get the ball to the point guard. He's the only one that could take the offense. Then you have multiple guys that can handle the ball, which allows you obvious flow freely instead of just relying relying on one ball handler to basically make plays for everyone. So I like the way I like the landscape of the game right now. Um, you know, you get a chance to see guys full full um, skill set. You know, you see six, eight guys that can post up, but they also can handle the ball to two, three. They have moves, and that's what a line who I think is could be MVP every year. LeBron James shine. You know, you not limit him because of size. And okay, LeBron, you six, eight, you two hundred and six or seventy pounds. You should be in post. No, we're going to allow you to play from the transition half court, three point line, inside the paint. So you allow him to play his complete game. And I like when I see guys that do that. Not too long ago, uh, Tony. I, I... Yeah, not too long ago, I had a had Derek Anderson on the show, and he straight up said, "Your '96 team, your all's '96 team, '96 championship team would have taken the 2012 team to school." Mm-hmm. Agree, disagree is is the is the '96 team, or excuse me, 1996 <laughs> team, the best UK team. Um, you know, if you look at the numbers, the, the, He's, this is where we get a po- po- like a politician's answer here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm about to walk you the numbers. The numbers. Okay. Of having, <laughs> we average probably the most in any UK team, and just uh, our style of play is totally different um, than what we're seeing right now. And we and when Coach and when Coach Patino, when he assembled that team, he put the old players. So when you had a Antoine Walker, Walker Carter, you had guys that could three. So the big men would have to be out paint, and that mm-hmm. allows space. So when you have five guys that could court all five guys put the ball on the floor and we played and we, we took pride in playing deep you know that was the one thing that mm-hmm. you know with us having veteran guys we understood that you know in order to go on a 10 or 15 or run you got to get consecutive stop and yeah. that's what we did and we brought in the style of play but we also could play full court half court and then we had a plethora of scores so it, it was a it was a, a unique team that we had at that time just having a mixture of you know uh, Ron Mercer the freshman Wayne Herman Turner yeah. the freshman you know right. Derek Anderson for the transfer you know you know, and then having myself and Walter Party, Mark Bolt, that were seniors, we just had a good combination, good chemistry of players. And, you know, we all had sacrificed parts of our game and scoring. And, uh, you know, we, we did it for the, for the betterment of the team, but we also did it because we knew that if we did this together, because in 95, I thought we should have won it. You know, we had a, mm-hmm. we was like, I want to get North Carolina again. And one of them. Yeah, them but, uh, against fouls. Rasheed Wallace and Jerry Stackhouse, right? Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you get Walter Party sack foul. You know, so it, it was, like I said, one call, turn, change a game. And the NCAA tournament, especially when you're playing exceptional basketball. But that team, that, that, 2000, that 2012 team was a really good team to watch. You know, when you have mm-hmm. Terrence Jones, 
uh, Anthony Davis, who probably was your third or fourth option, and, you know, just how he impacts games. Uh, they just have the, uh, the returning players of, you know, Darius, Darius Miller, Aaron Jones, and also Ron Lamb that you, you need mm-hmm. some experience, you know, in order to win a championship. And that team has some experience, and then they had a, a great group of uh, a young players came in. Yeah. Now, it wasn't uh, – Heather, we had uh, Andre Riddick on the show not too long ago, and he was on that 95 team, right? <laughs> Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah because that's right, because I I asked him point blank. I said, I asked him, how how good did it feel for him to go WWE on Rasheed Wallace? The choke. <laughs> 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 he well, liked you know it. Dre <laughs> Riddick was one of those guys that he didn't play that. You know, he, I, I remember Rasheed elbowing him, and I man, you don't know, mm-hmm. guy. Yes. Dre lost him up, but that was, that was Riddick, and at any point in time, you know, he was he was that guy that, that, that takes it to another level of need be quiet. Right. But once yeah. you know you mm-hmm. you antagonize him, you put your hands on him, you say something, then you want to see the dog come out. But uh, mm-hmm. you know we we had, we had so many great teams. You know even my freshman year playing, we're losing to yeah. the Fab Five and in the overtime. You know I, I played with really good mm-hmm. teams, and yeah. Coach P really built a really good program. Time he got there in 1990, 89-90 season, yes. um, and every year his team got better. And the style mm-hmm. of play was the style of play that we're seeing right now. That is so funny that when everybody looked at basketball, I'm like Coach Patino had Dick. Man, he was three back in the night. Right. Actually, right. you know, if you go back to Walt Cardi and go walk them, those, mm-hmm. those guys are all we want shooters. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, here's he 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 does it, and yeah, in a lot of that, especially in this state, is because of his where his allegiance is now. But he'll always be, you know, as a Kentucky fan, he's always going to be my coach. He's it. But I have to bring up there's this. I saw this on ES or SEC Network not too long ago, (laughs) and you were part of this game. To me, depending on who you you who you uh, who you are, you either call it the uh, miracle in Mardi at Mardi Gras. Or, as I like to call it, the biggest choke job by a school and a coach in the history of Division One basketball. In 1994, you guys 31 down with 15 and a half at LSU, and you win the game by four. Not a last second <laughs> shot. You won the game by four. So the game, in a sense, was already over before the zeros. I mean, that game to me it goes down as uh, one of the craziest games. But as a as a player playing in that game, I've never had that chance to ask someone how how was that? What was it like? Being on the, you know, well, being so, part of it. Well, for me, it, it was a game where we had come off. We just lost to Syracuse and uh, in Arkansas. So that would have been the, my only three game lose three in my my tenure at Kentucky. But it, it was just, you know, you're on the road, down by so many points, and even in halftime, we were down. And I remember, you know, Coach was, you know, he was, he, 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 he short words for him, words I can't even say. But you know, it was a matter of, you know, the players coming together. Hey, we got to get things under under twenty, under fifteen. You know, so we we, we set goals for ourselves to win a game. And of course, we made shots, and they had players that were extremely hot. And uh, once again, it, it was that style of play. You can put five guys court that make three, and if you play unselfish and you make the right pass, and guys are in rhythm, you make shots. Game, we made a, made a lot of shots second half. They were still scoring, but we they were scoring twos. We were, we were scoring threes. We were getting turnovers, and it was just a game that you know what we just never gave up. And I think that's what mm-hmm. Coach Pino instilled in all of us that until that until you hear that horn, keep playing. And oh, yeah. regardless of you being down, you know you got to keep playing on self basketball play things. But that game alone but, was probably down one of the greatest, one of my greatest. Exactly. Ever. Yeah, but it's just unheard of, Tony, for a team to be down thirty one points in the second half at any point of the on second the half <laughs> on the road, but yet still. <laughs> dictate but yet still dictate the flow of the game you did you right. guys dictated the flow of that game and yeah good god uh, yeah I, I consider that but now give props to you guys for playing your asses off and you all coming out with the win but right. i don't know yeah, I, if i'm an ad that. if i'm an ad i might be uh like what the hell just yeah all right well, tony no, we're, we're wrapping yeah, well, he here he is. He's gonna he's gotta stay he's gotta stay right down the line. He's an SEC network I know. guy. Heather. I know I'm trying to bait him, but he, it ain't working. All right, Tony, as we wrap up uh, the segment with you, I'm gonna throw uh what I, we call round of shots, some quick question answers. Just have some fun with it. You're not this you you it's not gonna you're not gonna make TMZ with any of your comments. So just play along. <laughs> First concert Tony Delk attended. New edition, Fat Boys, and Houdini. Ooh, nice. (laughs) Ah, I love it. Number two, uh, who would be a celebrity you'd like to be stuck in an elevator with? Wow. I would say Denzel Washington. Interesting guy. 
he can't, he can't go wrong with Denzel. Yeah. Any uh, Hollywood aspirations, Tony? That's a different. This I'm. This not. I'm digressing here, but. No, I mean, you know what? Actually, I mean, just being on TV with S Network is good enough. It, it would be okay. nice, I guess, to have a make a quick camera your appearance. But no, I, I think I'm with my own skin right now. I don't have to be on be in a series or in a movie. All right. Uh, speaking of movie, what is number three? What's your favorite movie? Your go-to movie? Going back, Denzel Washington training. Mm. Yes. Mm. Oh, that was his yeah. best movie by far. Oh, because right. he was day, and he played it so good. And, and, and life, life, life yep. is another fun movie. Yeah. Yes. You can't there leave you go. Out life. life and training day are my two favorite movies, but training. Training. Okay. Number four, uh, your favorite phone app. Oh man, hey, I'll probably explain it before you call Candy Crush. <laughs> yes. Oh, good God. <laughs> <laughs> all right, number I'm number five. It. Yeah, all right, number five. This is actually a sport question, but I, this is this one I need to know. Who is the greatest NBA player not to win a title? Ooh, man, including Pleasant Company. Right there. Tony, wait a minute. Wow, you, did wow, you, wow. you didn't, did you win a NBA? Were you on an NBA championship team? No, no, I, I didn't win one. Okay. You know what? Yeah, I, I, okay. I would have to say I would have to put. I would have to say Carmelo. Yeah. Mm, I think I would agree with you. Barkley, close. Barkley close, Barkley yeah. close. You say Iverson, but you know, Carl Malone went to finals. You know, along with Charles yeah. Barkley. But the one part, but the one player doing there was Mike Jordan. Stop both mm-hmm. of those, both of those yeah. guys. Michael Jordan, yeah. All right, last one for you, Tony. Uh, if you had access to a time machine and you can go anywhere in the past, your living past, pre-birth past, where would you go? Oh God, man! I, I would <laughs> take myself to <laughs> you know what, where I have been, and I might go the year, my pupil. Really? Okay. Real? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that that's somewhere nice. I've always wanted to go, and, and hopefully I can make it happen this year. See if it's if it's on the uh, vacation destination. But uh, yeah, one place I'd like to I like the tradition, the history, and uh, you know, so somewhere different I have been. Yeah, that would make Cuba could be in my destination this year. We'll see. Oh, very cool. Man, Tony, you came on and you killed it. And you, you made uh, Heather and my night and, you know, my birthday night. Again, birthday, I get to man. say, I, get yeah, very cool. Uh, share with us, Tony, before we let you go, uh, social media, how can people connect with you? Uh, at TL Delta Zero Zero. So TL Delta Zero Zero, hit me up. I'll, Twitter. I normally respond. Some people on Twitter depends on what you want. <laughs> I don't know what you want. <laughs> no. Sorry. I'm glad you responded to what I wanted, and I appreciate it. You, you had a lot of fun wow, with you. No Man, thanks so much, Tony. Man, it was good good stuff okay, tonight. Yeah. Tony Delk, Heather, that was a I know. very solid segment. Very solid. I know. I I fangirled a little bit. I hope nobody could tell yeah. that. I did too. I did too. But I tried to still. You could tell. I was trying to get a TMZ soundbite from him. He wouldn't budge. He would not just. I know. Yeah, he stayed. Stay true to. He now he's and he is. He is one of my all time favorite Kentucky players. All mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Him and Tayshawn Prince are my two favorites. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, joining us now, she was been on hold for a few, but um, one of our favorites to the show. With our show, Heather, the love, very lovely Daryl Faust. Daryl, what's up? Well, that's quite the act to follow, but uh, yeah. I appreciate you inviting me to your birthday party. Happy birthday. It is. I Thank know. you so much. We love you, Daryl. We, uh, you, you uh, know, Daryl, Daryl, you and I, I mean, from the, you know, you and I go back a ways with my shooting from Lives Up, so I think you know where my loyalty to you has stood. Right. Uh, uh, well, yeah. uh, I appreciate having me on in the same conversation that Tony Dell's. That's pretty sweet. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> I was it's trying to good. think. I caught the end of that interview. Uh, he's talking about his the greatest comeback. I'm trying to think of my own uh, greatest comeback. And I what think, is your greatest comeback? For you know, for Louisville, or are you talking in general? In general, in my lifetime, okay. not just a sport. Oh. Oh. I didn't play. Oh, okay. I didn't play at Louisville. Uh, I played in uh, up until high school and then just kind of, you know, did the college thing. But uh, when I was in middle school, I actually broke my leg and it, like, oh. sidelined me for three years. So did get to come back to the game, but it's one of those things in my uh, look back on is kind of hindsight 2020. But it's great to come back. Yeah, I wouldn't say uh, this is my greatest comeback, but a few weeks ago I was out and I thought I totally bombed on a chick. But by the end of the night, I was – back in the game so that's kind of a good comeback for story for me. Wow. <laughs> the greatest Shit. It's not the, it wasn't the greatest but it was you know, <laughs> no, I, you know at my age i'm all about the moment at my my age I'm, i have to be honest 5-0 i'm not gonna live to be a hundred so i can honestly say 
I say this because I truly believe it, is that you know I'm I'm past second base, way definitely past second base. So I'm closer, you know, to home than uh than you know. Anyway, all right, I'm digressing a little bit, but this is not about baseball me. references. Sweet. Yeah, it is sweet. <laughs> speaking of speaking of baseball, I've got several topics to throw at you guys. So mm-hmm. Let me start with baseball. Baseball. Major, Major League Baseball is roughly almost a month into the season. Uh, let's start with Daryl. What's uh, surprises? Anything, you know, Oh, man. Surprising? Well, uh, you know, the, as a Red fan, you know, working with those guys, I just – I got to the point where we were, you know, 7-2, and two, I think, and we were first in the league, and then I forgot mm-hmm. to pay attention after that, which is kind <laughs> of just, I think, the story of the Reds. You know, I, right. I got – I'm – Still like uh, weaning off March Madness. I got two TVs up uh, in the living room, so I'll throw the Reds on the second TV whenever they're on, and uh, kind of catch the games more often. But I don't know what to say as far as surprises. Um, I just pay attention to the Reds, and it's about all I got time for. There you go, Heather. You. You know what? I'm actually surprised. Um, the Reds are, I think they're one game above 500 right now, but I am, um, you know, not to kind of jump ship, but I am a huge, huge fan of Amir Garrett. I think that the Reds have a lot of, you know, talent in their pitching staff. Um, I know that like Cody Reed, you know, he kind of struggled a little bit. Uh, Bronson Arroyo, I mean, he won his second game today, but um, you know, they're, the Reds have been a pleasant surprise, I guess. Um, yeah. You know, not many people expected much from them, and they're doing a, already a lot better than what everybody thought. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, as long as Billy Hamilton can continually get on base as, you know, the leadoff, because he's clearly proven in two or three games now, the guy has hit a single stolen second and stolen third and then scored a run in at least two or three games already. And that's right. that I mean, if your leadoff guy can get on base, I mean, it, especially at his left, whew, that's 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 good to get. Especially when you're a, a run a in the first season, Billy you know, in the first man. Yeah. Yeah, my my thing with MLB, uh, the season is so long. So I bring this up because I know you two are really into uh baseball more than me uh and and daryl i know your role with uh, the bats and stuff but when i hear the reds are off to this start like seven and two start and they're it's making news i'm thinking good god we're nine games into this season you got a uh, what 153 more to play let's yeah but anyways it, i guess it does make for a story all right daryl are you uh following keeping up with the nba playoffs well, last weekend was the spring game and like the Derby Festival Classic. I had no idea that the playoffs had started last weekend, but I I am paying a lot more attention this week. Uh, I know that OKC and the Rockets are facing off. That's about the most interesting first round uh, to me. Okay, Heather. Let me take my mic off mute here for a second. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, you know, <laughs> I think the the Memphis Grizzlies game the other night was a really good game. I am not an NBA fan um until the playoffs happen. But you know, I will tell you though, because I watched the Cleveland uh uh Indiana Pacers game today. How many calls does Cleveland get? Seriously. Did anybody see if- the game that I uh, that I did today? I caught the one yes or two days ago, but yeah, and it's at Pacers too, so that's kind of crazy. I know. Well, I mean, there was a couple times like where, you know, I felt like, you know, the Pacers, uh, not only did they get jobbed because they were getting called for, you know, a push off that happened that more to me should have been an offensive push off, but it, it just, I, 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 you know, I don't get this is why people hate the NBA, right? Because you have guys that consistently get the calls. And and this is, I don't know, for me personally, this is why the NBA is painful to watch. Agreed. It is a, it's a, it's a, it, to me, I will never be convinced that uh, marketing slash ratings do not factor into, um, you know, do, do the, is there blatantly bad calls? Uh, but I think, that if you know if it's a 50 50 there's no 50 50 call when it's lebron lebron will always get the benefit of the doubt or or a, or a higher seed you know cleveland in in versus indiana indiana so um again this is one of those things that's still i can't get into the nba playoffs until the really the last four teams so that each conference 
championship series. So. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm reading right now that LeBron t- team, any team he's on, you know, at the time he's won 21 straight first round games. So that's now the longest mm-hmm. streak by any player. So there's that. 21 so rounds. Round one. Wow. Wait a minute, 21 <laughs> rounds? 21, 21 straight first round games. Wow. Wait a minute. All 21 rounds first round games. So he, so you mean to tell me he has not lost a so, game in the first round? In like what, that's, three or four seasons? I think that's some some sort of the math. So yeah, four and oh for the last yeah. how many years. Well mm-hmm. that would be twenty one. That, yeah. Oh and well. That's, that's actually your that's going back five seasons in a sense, right? Five, yeah, five seasons. Nice. Wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's that. All right. All right. There's uh, math one on one for us. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna start with Daryl here because uh, you're the non UK uh, person on this panel. Um, UK football took some, you know, from the critics took a little bit of heat on the fact that Mark Stoops uh, gave out rings to the players after this season. Uh, you know, normally when you, I mean, I have to admit, Heather, I'm, you know, I'm, I bleed blue too, but yeah, I just, I'm not into the whole, you know, giving a trophy for second place kind of thing. So Daryl first, you know, yes, no, good. I mean, I mean, I guess, you know, you know where, you know what I'm going to say here. No, and I want you to say it. I know you are setting her up, Kevin. (laughs) This is literally the participation trophy to a team. Okay? That's that's all. But see, I'm with you. I'm with you. So say it. In a sense, it's the Governor's Cup that was won by the seniors, you know, like that they haven't won in half a decade. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. Now, wait a minute, Heather, Daryl. We're talking two different things. No, no, it's the Governor's Cup on one side. Okay. And then the other side okay. was the bowl game. So it's kind okay. of like a you. piece okay. of so, a regular season you. game in a oh, way. Okay. But you, okay. regular season games should not be glorified into ring for individuals. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what that trophy is. You got that in your yeah. uh in, in the facility. So right. it's kind of like Lame. I know Louisville did it for like winning five in a row and stuff like that, but that was also on top of a bowl win. And Kentucky didn't, not only did they not win their game, they severely did not win their bowl game. So it's just, yeah, mm-hmm. kind of lame. Um, it, it's a, I think it's a setback because Kentucky was like, you know, setting these goals. We got to get to a bowl. We got to get to six wins. We want to beat Louisville. We want to do this. And, and it mm-hmm. was happening. We built a, a nice new facility. It's a, it's a lot more exciting around the program. This is just like a setback, like, you know, pat on the back to the, to the guys that stuck through it all, but in the end, it's a participation trophy. I, I, you know, I'm I'm with you, Heather. Your take. So, um, you know, the, the weird thing is, is that a majority of the people that you know I saw on social media said, "Hey, look, you know, all the teams do this, right? If you make a bowl game, you get a ring, so on and so forth." And and I agree with the participation trophy aspect, so to speak. But at the end of the day, um. You know what? If 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 the NCAA or Kentucky is going to give you know rings out for making a bowl game, Louisville, UC, anybody else, go down the line is going to do the same thing, right? And I'm not talking about your top tier programs like Alabama, Ohio State, Michigan, maybe even or even Penn State. It, it's these teams are going to get people, they're going to do whatever they can do to get energized or get their fan bases energized, their recruits energized, potential recruits energized. And if this is what Kentucky wants to do, nobody can fault them because at the end of the day, so does every other big kind of big program. They do the same thing. So why is Kentucky being criticized for it? Uh, I just, I don't know. I just think we're, we're at a... I don't know. I, I to me, it, it kind of reminds me of Indiana. It would be better if we won. It would yeah, be better if we won. However, it just, however, it reminds me of are you hanging a Sweet Sixteen banner? They are. Uh, well, I, okay, I, and I still think all right. In, in those teams or schools that do it, I think it's wrong as well. So, I'm gonna. I just don't think these guys are gonna wear these rings. Like you know, they're gonna move on in their careers in some fashion, and they're it, whether it's, you know playing on Sundays or you know working at a firm. I don't think they're gonna wear them. They're just gonna be like, yeah, I got. Yeah. Oh no, but, they'll be buried in a yeah. jewelry box somewhere. It I is don't want to uh, talk about it. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good point. Um. 
Heather, Heather, uh, let's start with Terrell. Terrell, uh, you being um, bleeding red in and out, What's what was your take on the whole Papa John and U of L athletic, the little, <laughs> bar, you know, barbs going back and forth? Uh, who, if I'm, you know, in, from how I saw it, Papa John was taking some shots at, um, you know, the AD. Is mm-hmm. that how you saw it? Where where does that stand now? Or one, how did how did you you know what was your thoughts on it, and then how does it stand now? Well, first of all, I'm not a fan of Papa John's Pizza Corporation. Any of it's not. I don't like Papa John's. It's not my go-to. I don't order it. I don't even need to mm. eat it if it's free. Okay, it's just not <laughs> my. It just doesn't make. It's not good pizza to me. Anyways, there was a point in time where he kind of got on my nerves. Remember when he got drunk and. Was in a bunch of pictures on social media. He looked like an idiot. You know, embarrassing shit like that. Well, hold on, um, Daryl. Wait a minute, Daryl. Yeah, you're trying to, like, now create a, uh, you know, you're trying to, what's the word I'm looking for? You're trying to kind of establish some type of uh, identity with him. But that's not, that's well, not the question. To, I'm trying to establish credi- credibility. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay. in, in my, All right. From my perspective, his credibility. Okay, because I was about to turn the page there. Um, All right, go ahead. Just Let's recently, turn it. In the last couple months um, before Ramsey and Rutherford, their show went down, um, they had Papa John on there for an interview. And I really enjoyed the interview. I was like, interested in what he was talking about, how he goes out and works um, with specific brands to, to keep his consistency. He, he's really a good businessman. Um, I enjoy, and I liked him more after that interview. And then mm-hmm. like something like this, I'm just kind of like taken from taking a back with a comment like that towards a man that's on the record book. What you're saying is false. Okay. So it's more mm-hmm. false news. It's uh, money. I mean, he said, you know, how much money is being thrown around between the, the athletic program. He said his name on the side of, pa- I mean, Papa John, why Why do you say things like this? You know, like mm-hmm. sometimes I, I can understand because personally I say things and I'm like, how the hell did I say that? Um, and it doesn't come out right. You know, communication is like all these two and three way streets and everybody interprets it different ways. And a part of me feels like because of the money being thrown around with the expansions and the um, the Yum Center situation. And, you know, I never really liked when Papa John started expanding to Kentucky. And uh, I think he just recently in, went to Cincinnati and endorses them. Yeah, as, as in the you know, University of Kentucky. The guy. As in yeah, the University of Kentucky, right. Yeah, yeah okay. like when he was wearing um, that Kentucky shirt on TV. So, you know, a part of me feels like he he has he feels like he has a say in how the athletics is being run. Do I see a problem with the athletics? Yes and no. Do I, you know, like do I sit here and wait for the next thing that Papa John's is going to say? Right, I don't think, no. and I don't think he should have that much cool in George's relationship with his coaches, his his program. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm also not sitting over here like wondering WTF, and I'm not losing sleep over it because I could pay attention right. just about as much as I already have. Mm-hmm. Gotcha, Heather, you take. So, Daryl, the one thing I wanted to ask you is that at the end of the day, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't look good for Louisville, especially on the basketball side. What I, I mean, when you look at all the stuff that's been out in the media and all the stuff that's been brought to light, do you think like programs like, I don't know, for an example, North Carolina, do they get a free pass? Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, the media has their favorites and media shares what they want to share. Uh, we've seen it over the years. I feel like there's just a sort of jealous relation or jealousy about the relationship between Patino and the University of Louisville, Louisville because there's so much loyalty there. I'm a huge Patino fan. I just, you know, he's like a father to so many guys uh, throughout the program, throughout the many years he's been here. This is not a man that wants to be malicious. He doesn't want to break rules. He doesn't you know what I'm saying? He's, he wants to be a global and Tom Dridge and him have a relationship that some other people don't understand. Like Papa John, I'm sure he's, I feel like he's just jealous of it. I don't know. I feel like a lot of people are because of the whole scandals. And I just think people have a hard time stepping back, looking at situations for what they are and, and, you know, moving past them with, uh, with, with respect and with uh, an open mind and, and, and being understanding. Well, uh, I, I'm uh, this, Tara. I love you, but I'm gonna take you to task on this. Um, when you got a business guy like J- 
John Schnatter, who has put millions company wise, his 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 company's put millions into the university. And his name or his company is attached to, you know, a great football facility. Actually, I really like it there. But then you do have, you know, the outside of the city. I know where your loyalties are, and I respect that. I get that. But outside the city, there's a lot of people, media-wise, football, basketball, fan base-wise, who kind of, like, laugh and, oh, my God, University of Louisville basketball. Look at the scandal that's going on. Football, you're, you're, you've got a coach that, you know, you know, had his – you know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, the bad people, deeds people and stuff. Believe what they want to believe. Well, no, no, no. Hold, hold on. Wait a minute. Those are facts, I'm though. On, no, Daryl, those no, are no, facts. I, I understand that, but that's a okay. stupid thing to be like. Okay, uh, U of L football. Uh, you know, Bobby Trino had sex with some woman he was hanging around, or you could think U of L <laughs> football. They just had uh, the, the Heisman Trophy winner. You know, it's it, you think of things how you want to. There's yeah, okay. there's a couple okay. ways okay. to go about it. Okay. All right, I see. Right. No, no. Um, no, I, I mean, from a from a from a, yeah from a coaching perspective, there's nothing you can discount about the coaching of of Patino and Petrino. Coaching alone, they are elite coaches. It's just some of the the stuff, if you will, quote unquote stuff, the extra baggage now that is still more so in. I get it, I get it, but get, I'm just trying to wrap my brain around all these people who can't seem to, to turn that finger and be like, have I ever done anything shitty? Have I ever cheated on somebody? I don't know if you all have. I, I mean, I have, and it's not something I'm super proud of, but well, it happens. I know. Like, like, and, I under, and, 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 and Patino admitted it, and he apologized to his boss and everybody else that don't matter, and his wife, who actually does. I don't care uh, okay. who he's laying down with. I, 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 I don't want people to lie about it. Um, mm. And this is the same thing about the other scandal. People want it to be a scandal. People want to think that a brothel was being run on a, a public university campus. Like, that is the third to believe. Mm. And, Daryl? Yeah, it's, it's just but not it was. Wait a minute, it was. was. A thing. I assure you. For four years, Daryl. I assure you. Heather, we there love. Was not I, a brothel. <laughs> Ron been okay. a woman and. All right. She, that we all right. You, we can we could this will be a this could be a topic we can go on. But let's let's keep going. Let's keep going for the for the sake of uh, the show. Um, Colin Kaepernick, LeBron James, named to Times 100 most influential people list. Um, you know, Colin Kaepernick, Daryl made a stand last year. And but but in making a stand for most of America, aka white America, became public enemy number one. Donald Trump has even tweeted about having uh, some, you know, um, what was I can't remember his tweet verbatim, but he kind of takes credit with the fact that Kaepernick hasn't landed with any team. Uh, LeBron, that's another story, but Kaepernick being. One of, named one of the most uh, influential people. Agree? Disagree, Daryl? Well, sure, I agree that he's been, like, one of the most talked about. And if that's what influential is, then I'd say, yeah, because if he's getting people to talk about an issue, that's pretty influential. And um, to, be, to, to even back it up all the way to the beginning, he didn't take his hand in the beginning. Someone else brought Sorry. it up for him. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you, you're looking for a story, you got one. You know, mm -hmm. there's that media again. That that's a good point. And um, you know, with with Kaepernick, the you know, this is where he didn't vote, which to me, I think oh, that, that's the yeah, that's that's where obviously I think every American has to in in using your voice, you know, or your opinion yeah. should at least vote. And he didn't. Yeah. So it's like, uh, man, I, I get what you're doing, Colin, but you know, you kind of like. You know, uh, you know, let the ball. You fumbled there because you didn't. Yeah. Heather, uh, are you get this back. I don't. Heather was. Um, she might still be. She I'm messaged here. me. She was going. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You feeling better? The uh, bladder. Yes. Okay. Now, Heather, your take on Colin? Is he agree? One of the most influential people of last year. Well, um, you know, I get the message that he was trying to display, and I I respect it. So I. Is he influential? Uh, maybe to some, um, but 
is he the most? Um, and this is Time Magazine, by the way, so he is very one-sided. Um, right. You know, I, I, you know what? To each his own, I guess, so to speak. So um, okay. I don't know that he um, delivered the message as the you know as as good as everyone else has. But you know what? Kudos to him for doing what he doing what he believes in. Kudos to him. Um, next topic: NCAA has now declared that, or let me pull. I'm, I've got to pull. Actually, pull up the article. So my apologies. Um, that they are going to start the NBA season now it appears to be a week or so earlier. Basically, the season will start at the beginning of November, and the article that came out was against it. It was anti starting the season earlier. And I, I agree because college football is the marquee uh, college football medium. I mean, it's the college football event. And the NCAA, in men's ba- or basketball itself, men's and women's struggle going head to head with the, with college football. Daryl, you buy into the season starting earlier? I mean, what's this? What was your take when, what? on that? I'm not exactly sure what that's going to accomplish. Yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I guess. Uh, go ahead. A week time, that's what, two games? I, what's, the, what's the point? Uh, probably. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, that's, that's what I'm I saying. Is that, I have no idea what the yeah, appeal is here. I don't, yeah, well, you know, my thinking is that why are you, you know, as the article pointed out, why do you still continue to uh, put yourself against the the uh, the juggernaut in college football that you're already losing again. A lot of people are right. thinking there's people that think the season should actually start later, and because there is that window, you know, I, I think a lot of people would l- rather see um, uh, the season, you know, maybe even go head to head, you know, oh, Mark, go head to head with baseball a little bit because you know, I don't, I just I don't I do not get that move. So I'm, I guess I'm with you, Heather, or Daryl, that another week, two games, it's status quo to me. So if you're mm-hmm. if you're trying to make a – so, yeah, Heather, add to it. Yeah, I don't – this move to me makes zero sense. I mean, it's like, you know, why why are you cutting in to college football season? Why I, – this – I don't get it. I just simply don't get it. I think it's an opportunity for them to put another Duke-North Carolina matchup. No oh, right. So, so a university who doesn't take classes versus a university who um, perpetuates, I don't know, white boys who are douchebags and apparently like jewelry. What is this? Sorry, I'm out. No. Keep, we hate them. Can we all unite picky, in that? Hate? Pick, picking, on, picking on the uh, stereotype. <laughs> Should I drop the mic now? Did uh, I heard uh, Grayson uh, is, is coming back for his senior year, by the way. Oh, wonderful. Oh. Lucky us. Lucky, lucky Daryl and her. They, they better not. Buddy. Then they better not add two more games for him to possibly injure all of college basketball. All of college basketball. All right. Um, speaking of, uh, well, no, we're not speaking of it. Well, speaking of injuring, I guess that's one way to go. Indiana University officially bans student athletes with any history of sexual or domestic violence. I say that's a good thing. And then mm-hmm. when you're starting to look at a lot of these schools that, you know, think that giving these yeah. kids a second chance by coming in, blah, blah, blah. Daryl, thumbs up, thumbs down to this band by Indiana. Well, I have no reason to say, you know, thumbs down to it. It's only going to make me feel safer. It's just like a mm-hmm. you wouldn't bring a, a known child abuser to and allow him to come to an elementary school, would you? Like, pretty much one plus two is three. Hello? Oh, I was, I was, I had myself. So, <laughs> Heather, what I was saying is that uh, earlier we had math 101, and now Daryl is giving us some more math. I, one <laughs> plus two, yeah, sorry. So, yeah, but, you know, in, in seriousness, and I get, I, I know what you said. To me, it's a no-brainer. But, you know, again, big-time athletics, you know, and we, there was the, what was the, Mississippi was, I think it was the school where, Mississippi or Mississippi State, where the video came out of this kid who clearly clocked some chick. 
in the summer before oh, he yeah. arrived on campus. Right, and you just uh, had a potential um, draft pick in Florida who, who the same thing. You had a guy with, with the Gators that was going to be a first-round pick in the NFL draft, which is like, what, a week away? And now, mm -hmm. you know, he's facing any possible, you know, assault charge against a woman. You know, here's where, <laughs> shocker, I'm going to give Indiana uh, kudos, is that the fact that they're going to weed out bad apples. We have consistently seen throughout the NCAA coaches, players, fan bases, so on and so forth, boosters even, that have wanted to weed out the bad guys. I mean, look what happened at Baylor with Art Riles and their football program. I mean, those guys, they, they shouldn't, the best football program shouldn't even be playing right now. I, I, so, you know, the fact that a Division One. A Division One, uh, you know, program is willing to step up and say, not only, you know, are we here for our female athletes, but we're going to protect them too, and we're going to protect our female students. How can you fault them? Because mm -hmm. no other university has done that. They really haven't. True. Yes. Daryl, any final thoughts on that? Well, I mean, it's just a precautionary thing these days, and I feel like some boundaries need to be made with it because there are people who falsely accuse and ruin people's lives. So it's just one of those things that people uh, are going to have to take seriously, but also uh, take take it with a grain of salt if that is in any way possible. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. Uh, to me, it's a no-brainer. You uh, you commit any type of assault, domestic, anything like that. Um, Right, you know, no, your ass does not even come close. So, because if you're All the right. president of university, you know, you you're in charge of twenty thousand people's well being. Imagine mm -hmm. bringing mm -hmm. one known predator or assault, you know, assaulter onto your campus. It, I mean, it doesn't just apply to your student athletes, to the whole student body. I agree. God, when you you ladies are right, you're you're really right. Now, here's one. This next topic. This one kind of. I don't know. I and when I saw this, I kind of—I have to admit—I kind of rolled my eyes on it. Not because it's well, actually, I don't know. Maybe you got you—you you ladies will tell me why I rolled my eyes on it. But this chick, student athlete. Let me—I digress or uh, correct myself. Student athlete Becca Longo becomes the first woman on scholarship at a Division II football level or higher. A scholarship. She's a kicker. She made the mm -hmm. news. Is that a big deal that you got a Daryl, someone who can, uh, in this case, a kick, make you get grabbing a scholarship? Well, first of all, her last name is perfect for her job. Um, <laughs> you, if you also read the rest of the article, you'd know that she's also playing basketball. So this I is a, somebody who's play like plays probably everything and excels right. at all of them. So um, as far Which as probably the scholarship, meant yeah, which That's probably she, she, yeah, she probably has played all these sports. Does she even have time for a period? Yeah, it just delayed itself. No, Good she's Lord. probably doing that. Really? She's probably doing that too. That was that was probably a little bit of a massage of this comment. I, I, I certainly sorry, want I, to I, come I, through I, my my you? my headset and punch you in the face. Really? Okay. <laughs> But you really? know what I'm saying, really. <laughs> you, I know, oh, but then. you know what I'm saying. Okay, why can't I be a little controversial? I just, I, a kicker, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I wasn't dazzled. It's made news, but I, I just didn't dazzle me. Maybe it dazzled you. What all. do you want her to do? Is she supposed to come out here and take the starting wide receiving <laughs> position? Like, no, this because is a, that, long that, time would, coming that would, and, you know, granted, that would make, me make it more impressible for me, God, but that's never Kevin that's never going to happen. Kevin is impressed. Kevin is that would never happen. But you're, it you're is talking, pretty awesome to see. But you know what? All the joke things. is the joke is, dears, ladies, my lovelies, is that the kickers on most teams are talked about. You know, like they're not even really football players because they, you know, how many well, of we them? We already established that she also plays basketball and doesn't have periods. So, aren't you impressed? <laughs> Okay, you, you threw that card at me. All right, I'm more Ugh. impressed. Ugh. Do you are you not on my side tonight, Heather? No. That's yeah. good. You know, all not this right is now. proof is at that all. We don't. Hold up, hold we up. don't have to so get I'm along you, on every can I show. Tell you, can I tell you a little personal story that happened to me this weekend? So my son Ooh. played in a baseball tournament. This is six sixth graders, twelve, thirteen year old boys, right? And um, mm. I'm out, you know, before the game, tossing baseball with him. 
And one of the kids looks at my son, Chris, and says, your mom can throw a baseball? And I looked at this kid like, you're kidding, right? Like, is this a real question? Like, how does that happen? Like, like you don't know how course. to motion your arm from backwards to forwards? <laughs> So, wow. so look, I, I looked at this kid and I said, of course I can throw a baseball. Um, do you want to talk with us? Do you want to throw with us? What do you want to work on? I, I I mean, so on and so forth. So the kid looks at me and says, well, you know what? I, I'm just not used to moms or girls throwing a baseball. And and I told him, you know what? Look a little bit better. Look, look more. You, you got to look better because... <laughs> I'm not saying girls, guys are better at anything, so on and so forth, so forth. But come on, I hate this com- this stupid stuff. You know where it's clear if she can kick a football, she can kick a football. What what is the big deal? Why does it matter that she's a girl? If she's good at what she can do, so be it, right? That's right. because girls aren't supposed to sweat and you know be competitive and uh, you know shit like that. It, it's the year 1900. Uh, right, we should oh, all be in the kitchen wearing a bacon sandwich, frying We're some eggs, whatever. Sundresses right? and horses, and, and a smile when all the men are around. Hey, wait, until YouTube. these motherfuckers can have a baby, I don't want to hear shit. I, the end. I had it. You, 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 you don't know <laughs> that the pain I went through last week. I had a double paper cut, Heather. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, I mean, you. you the word right. 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 whatever and then and then somebody handed me a chicken wing with with a habanero flavor that happened to hit the same thumb as the said uh paper cuts i thought i was gonna have to cut my thumb off that's how serious it was nice i grabbed a, lo- a light bulb today did you i feel you see yeah, now we're all on the same page <laughs> All right, we're we're winding down with the show. It's been a great show. It's been a fun show. Um, anything? I'll start with Daryl. Any shot you want to throw out that we didn't discuss? Well, I kind of wanted to piggyback off the little league baseball stuff from this week because I'm also mm-hmm. uh, umpiring and had yes. a few chaotic plays where uh, you know the coach that. You know, Germantown is just a shrinking league. Uh, it gets smaller by the year. We don't have umpires show up. Uh, the entire team doesn't show up. So, like, games are played with 16-year-olds and 11-year-olds just so a game can be played. And, you know, that's kind of sad that just people can't dedicate the time to Little League because so much time is into AAU, and that's where they're going to get uh, all their, you know, their stats so they, can go, so they can go to college for baseball and on and on. And, uh, you know, I had a coach that didn't even have enough girls to uh, put a field out there, and the entire time he's sitting here counting my mistakes, as, or, and my Ooh. and my partner's mistakes, and oh, I'm just wow. going to be like, dude, like you, we shouldn't even be playing this game if you want to be technical, you know, and it's just like, mm-hmm. girls, I, and I, I only do softball, um, I want to be around the girls, I don't want to go around little boys, who, which I guess I need to, so they can know that girls know how to throw a baseball, uh, but I enjoy being around little girls who I hope to see uh playing in college one day just like that kind of mentality and i had one girl uh Mm -hmm. tell me that she liked that i was umpiring with her and that just kind of made up for Mm -hmm. all the bullshit from from everybody Uh else are you a loud umpire there are you loud i need need to get better at that what would it when if there is a called strike three tell give (laughs) us your call strike give us your called strike three you watch uh, uh, Eastbound and Down, you know, Kenny Powers? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, you're fucking out. I'm kidding. I don't say that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just say, <laughs> it's a strike to that out. But, nice. okay, I, want, I also want to step back and, and throw this other um, into the down because of the safety of our players. Um, I won't let my pitchers out there without a mask on because in the mm-hmm. last, what, Three weeks, we've seen two softball players uh, in the state of Kentucky get hit in the face. One broke her face. Um, oh, wow. And I had to argue with her mother about how I wasn't going to play with unless her daughter had a mask on. And she just kept going on about how her daughter's not going to be able to see now, and she's definitely going to get hit in the face. And I'm just thinking, well, sorry, I don't want your daughter to eat liquids for six months, and, you know, she could keep her teeth. And um, also... This is what parents need to shut the fuck up. Seriously. I know. It's, it's, it's just... I yeah. can't believe I have to have these conversations. And um, I just want to be like, dude, does she have a helmet when she's batting? Oh, okay. I guess she's... 
And she actually <laughs> had a really great game. She was strike after strike after strike. It was a bullshit claim, and nobody died. So Nice. All right. As we're winding down um, the show from you guys, but I'm going to entertain myself. I am going to, you know, when it comes to the shooting from the lip thing, uh, my title has been basically the producer slash host of a show. Now I want to add a title called uh, President of Shooting from the Lip. And there's a reason for it. Check this out. <laughs> this is the reason. Yeah, leave it to Maryland to give me some birthday love. Is this like I, a, a long-standing presidential title thing, or is it for the meantime? It, it's for the meantime, for but you know, for the day, yeah, so just for now, anyways. It's all good, it's all good. And again, I'll I'll say, Heather and I, this is our baby. Heather, agree, disagree with me. We, we've changed the format up to where we, our first half of the show, we... Uh, try to get a very solid first guest to where the guest is the emphasis of the show. And then the second half of the show, we still do our round of shots where we throw out the trending sports topic. And um, you know, so tonight, birthday night, it was complete with Tony Delk and the lovely Daryl Faust. Right? Daryl Faust. Yeah, Daryl Faust. She's our girl. She's our girl, right. And wait a minute, didn't, didn't, uh, Heather, didn't you get to go on one of those, uh, Daryl shows in the past? Yeah, I, it, <laughs> I did. Sweet. Um, it was toward the end of the football season, I think. I guess boys well, are not allowed, wanna, right? If, if you want to come on again, I mean, we talk some derbies, a spring game, whatever you want, Red. Oh, I'm excited about the derby. So, uh, my uh, father in law and I both put up a hundred bucks a piece. Um, at the start of the Derby, we end up betting the Preakness, Belmont, you know, go down the line, and then we split whatever we have left at the end. So um, I love Derby talk. Um, baseball, of course, I'm always up for that. Uh, I need to make it down to a little bat game, though. Oh, yeah, do that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do that. It, well, I mean, it's not far from me. So, you know, and of oh. course, it's a, you know, part of the farm system for the Reds. So, uh, yeah, I need to make a little bat game. For sure. Well, the weird thing was is a couple weeks ago when we had that exhibition game between the Reds and the Bats, yeah. the Reds lineup was familiar to me because it's my fifth season, but the Bats lineup, I was like, who are all these new people? Yeah. No, I know. It really well, is. It really is. Hey, Daryl, by the way, you're a Red fan. Are you not a fan of Amir Garrett right now? Isn't he a oh, son? Yeah. And yeah, and I just feel like their pitching has improved above and beyond and quicker than they had anticipated. So that's just a good sign for the future. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Kevin's like, whatever. But uh, excuse us while we fangirl over our baseball, Kevin. Exactly. Yeah, and Joey Votto. Whatever. Oh, Joey good Votto. Lord. Am that right? Good <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. That. <laughs> All right. Settle down, ladies, as we uh, are <laughs> wrapping up the show. Um, Let's see, Daryl, share with us your social media where people can check you out, follow you, you know, yep. blinds, well, blinds uh, to look through. If you've got ESPN, watch ESPN app and any of that stuff, you can check out the ACC Network Extra. I'm calling you those softball games. We just got like two weeks left of the season for that. Um, cool. Then I will be starting down at the bat, so usually running around there. And then uh, my weekly radio show is Kentucky Women Talk Sports. It's on 970 every Saturday at 1 o'clock. And then, mm-hmm. um, and then me on Twitter is at Daryl Fowl 4. 4. Daryl Fowl 4. Heather, what's your call call letters, people to connect with you? Follow me on at Heather Tungate 7 on Twitter, uh, Heather uh, underscore Tungate on Snapchat. Um, I have been filling in on at Big Blue Views. Um, I am also doing a new podcast on Friday night this week um, uh, at Kentucky Hot Brown Boys. It's actually a guy that I went to high school with who was a year younger than me, and they invited me to come on. We're going to talk wrestling, Kentucky sports, and probably some other shenanigans I'm not mentioning yet. So I'm very excited. 
Nice. Any chance that, you know, you're going to turn in your two weeks notice to me, Heather? You got to give me at least notice if you're chatting away <laughs> babe, from babe. the We're shooting from the lip. Yep. All right. Hey, now, we're a team. I told right, you that. Babe. We're a team. I know. All right. Love right. you, Kevin. If, uh, love you, you, love love you too. Do you? If, <laughs> I am not if a Maryland, we, and I cannot say, but right. I will say happy birthday to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Happy birthday, Kevin. Daryl, if you if things hold true for our next Sunday show, I might ask you to once again join us for the second segment because our first segment guest, if it oh. goes as planned, I won't say his name, but he is the host of arguably the most, the biggest Kentucky sport radio show, Ugh. and so um, that we're we're finally finalizing the details out. So. Anyway, stay tuned. No, I'm gonna make sure you do it. He's gonna join. Make, I'm gonna send him a message this week. He's gonna join. Mm. He's on the clock. I'll I'll, yeah. I'll 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 hit him up this week. Yeah. I'm so sure that, he's that's not doing anything else. Yeah. <laughs> so with that said, I still do my social uh my shows on uh Monday nights, Tuesday nights, Monday nights are the eclectic signature shooting from the lip shows where we have guests from within the town and then we talk some politics with my man russ tuesday nights we talk local music uh, which is a very popular show uh, for the local musicians so it's it's been all good um shooting from the lip follow us on uh itunes youtube subscribe there please twitter at the shooting lip like us follow us on facebook shooting from the lip again shooting from lip shows sunday monday and tuesday 10 p.m 9 central ladies it was fun as usual you all are great great daryl thanks for hanging thanks out lot, with Kevin. Us. we love Happy you birthday. thank you babe. talk to you later take, all right, take care all right, Heather. Good, solid show tonight. Um, I'm still kind of a, you know, I think you said it right. A little starstruck at, at a moment or two with Tony Delk, but he's the yeah. man. Man, he pulled it off. He he played along with us, and that's that show alone tells me. The next time we reach out to him, I would expect him to say, "Yeah, I'd come back on." I don't think we burnt any potential bridges with tony so that's no it. i don't think we did at all and and he honestly was really really fun to talk to it was it, i would love to have him back on for sure yeah for sure once you know i think once the sec gets started um yeah we'll, we'll definitely keep him on and I, I i had i told him to get me the sh- his shirt size and the dress so i'm going to be Sending him a shooting from the lip shirt, and hopefully he'll be sporting that one for us that we can show off Good. as well. So, yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. All right. Are you doing a show Monday night? Um, I'm not sure. I think we canceled last week. Uh, I had a bunch right. going on. So did Michelle. Um, I'm not sure when Kristen is coming back, so I may be on at the Big Blue Views tomorrow night. Okie doke. All right. For Heather Tungate, I'm Kevin Hale. We wish everyone a great Sunday night and a pleasant Monday morning. Peace out, fans. Stay stay with us on our next shows, Monday night, Tuesday night. Heather, have a good night. See ya. Go Cats. Bye. Go Cats, yes.